welcome back to my channel my name is Kim if you are new to my channel thank you if you enjoy this video please consider subscribing if you're a return subscriber thank you so much for coming back and checking out what I'm doing currently all right so today's video um, this is going to be a massive unhaul it's going to be into two parts this is part one because I have quite a few books that I am not uh, gonna read um, from my collection so I'm removing them a lot of them are ones that I have read um, but I don't foresee myself um, rereading there are some that I have attempted to read but then DNF them and then there's some that I really took a hard look over the weekend um, at my to be read uh, bookshelf and read through the synopsises and decided they're just not something that I am interested in reading anymore. So a lot of these come from book boxes and that's the uh, chance you take when you get them. Um, if you subscribe to them, is you may end up with books that you might be interested in reading, but then later if you don't have a chance to really pick them up soon because you've got an outstanding TBR or other things catch your interest, then later you may not be interested in continuing to read them. So the books that I will be unhauling, um, I will either donate to, um, I discovered a, a little book library in a uh, town next to me, because I live on the border between two different towns. Um, so I will check there first, see if they have any space there. I will check with our local library to see if they're, ex uh, blah, if they are accepting donations. And the final course will be to like a thrift store like Goodwill um, and that type of thing. So they're going to go to Good Homes. Um, I can ask friends and family, but they're usually doing, uh, <laughs> Nick's decided to walk across the table. Anyway, so if you saw her tail, that was baby Nick's. She decided to join us today. Um, most of my friends and family don't read um, physical books anymore. They read off of Kindles or Audible and that sort of thing or those types of apps now. So I will, I'll ask them if they're interested in coming and looking at them. Otherwise, again, those three options are available to me to donate books that I am no longer interested in. So they will find homes eventually to others who are more interested in reading them. All right. Enough of this rambly, lovely uh, introduction. But again, this is going to be a two-part series because I just have so many. Um, I'm not going to go into a ton of depth. I think I'll start with the ones that I have completely uh, just unhauled because that's just not something I'm interested in. Um, leave me comments down below. Have you read any of these authors? Uh, or give me suggestions if you have read the authors of what you think I would be interested in reading. Anyways, let's get started. So the first one from my shelf, I decided it was just uh, Castles of Water when I unboxed it. This is, I believe, a romance type book. I just wasn't fully committed into wanting to read it. I was kind of iffy at the time, and I've now decided just to go on and declutter it. Same goes in that one. And this one is by uh, Dane Huckle Hucklebridge. I always want to say Huckleberry, but it's Hucklebridge. So that's book one. This one is more military-esque. It's uh, The Guns Above by Robin Bennis. Um, I'm not much of into military stuff. Um, yeah, it's Aerial Signal, Signal Corps, um, Airship Captain. It's just not something I'm fully interested in. I have been exploring more science fiction and things of that nature, and I'm finding what my tastes are through these books boxes, and this just doesn't happen to be what keeps my interest. Okay, so that one's going. This is an unpopular opinion. I am not a huge Nicholas Sparks fan. Uh, it's the lucky one. Again, it's a type of romance. It's military romance. It's just not, not for me. I have tried some of his works and I just can't get into his style of writing. So that one is good. I know that will find a home soon. Uh, there are a lot of Nicholas Sparks fans. I just unfortunately am not one of them. This is Bellwether by Susan Kearsley. I believe this also is a romance. I adore the cover. It is so pretty and I've kept it around kind of for that. But just looking over, it is a historical romance kind of thing um, between two different countries and they give them hospitality and uh, prophecy love. It is, it's just not for me. Uh, not the type of romance I particularly care for. 
Not saying it's bad. I haven't read that author, but it just doesn't draw my interest. This one, uh, Nothing to Devour by Glenn uh, Hirschberg. This one came in a very, I think this is like the conclusion of the series and so much has gone on in previous books I just couldn't get into it because it kept on relating to things that had happened previously. Again, book boxes, it tends to, may not be the start of the series that you get dumped in, but some of, a lot of series, there are standalone books, but this one just had so much that you needed to know pre previously to really appreciate and understand that book. Um, I have tried to read Daniel Steele books before, but this one I was very kind of iffy about. It seemed to be kind of a um, cheating type of book. Um, instead of just breaking things off and that's just not something I'm interested in uh, um, condoning or writing about that type of thing. So the turning point, uh, just just not for me, unfortunately. Alright, so these other books I can actually talk more on. Um, some of them, most of them I can, some of them are mixed in that I didn't read. This one I got from my local um, Goodwill. Uh, it's the Twelve Kings in Shakahare. I thought I was going to. This is when I was getting into fantasy and um, I just, I've had it for over six months and I haven't picked it up yet. So just not, not going to happen. Well, let me put that in a maybe. <laughs> this is the hard part. Put it in a maybe. Okay. This is The Servant of Bones. This is an Anne Rice book. Again, I think I've tried to pick it up and just could not get into it. Um, I've read, I think, Interview with a Vampire and that area of things, but this is taking a different twist and just not something I've been interested in. Um, Autonomous by Annalie Newitz. I did start reading this book. This is one that I did DNF. It is a science fiction. Um, so it was just weird at the beginning is talking about these drugs and how it ended up creating weird things happen, so very negative outcomes. Um, I just, and it was just weird. Uh, like I said, I couldn't, I think I got around 25 pages in or so and I, I just couldn't keep my interest in. I just kept put, being pulled out of it and it just wasn't that good, unfortunately. Uh, again, I picked this one up again from my local uh, Goodwill. This is uh, Ruth Ware when I was trying to get into her writing. This is The Lion Game. I tried to get into it, but I couldn't, unfortunately. And I was very sad because I hear her so much hyped up on uh, BookTube that I, I really wanted to get into her writing. And this one, unfortunately, wasn't a, a good for me. So if there are other books by her you think I would get into, um, again, I'm into more horror, thriller, suspense, um, romance, kind of like the paranormal romance, that's kind of where I'm leaning to. I'm not much into mysteries and just straight up mysteries. It needs a little bit extra oomph um, to really draw me in is what I'm learning at. Straight up mysteries are just not my thing. This one was part of the series. <coughs> um, this is uh, Skull Sworn uh, by Brian St Stavelli. Stavelli. Um, it was just way out there. And I know fantasy can be way out there, but this was so far out of my realm that it was like, just seemed like pages and pages of description of this history, and I couldn't figure out the relevance of it. Um, and so I got bored. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got bored because I could not make the connections. There wasn't enough pull to really understand. You couldn't really get into the character development because you're so much on this history and this. It was just a no go. But I did give it a try. It is part of the series. Um, but yeah, I had such high hopes for that one, as well as this one. Um, this is The Mansion by Ezekiel Ben, and I thought it was going to be right up my alley. It was so not engaging. His, the writing style of Ezekiel Ben, it was just so not engaging. It, I couldn't get into it enough. Um, it was went on and on about, uh, it started off between this tension between these two um, characters, the two male characters who were really best friends when they were coming up. 
one person seemed to take over the idea that they both had and both worked on and the other one kind of got kicked aside and there was drug addiction or alcoholism or something going on and I couldn't really get into the meat of it. So unfortunately that one got DNF'd. This one is from the Bookcase Club, um, from the teen or YA section of it. I did really enjoy this. I can't remember if I gave it a three or a four star. Um, it was good. Some of it was a little bit predictable, but some of it was not. Um, so I did enjoy the reading of it and figuring out kind of the um, murder mystery part of it. Um, but it is teen based, but it was decent. Um, but I don't foresee myself going back and rereading it, so that's why it is being passed on. Um, I think this one. Yeah. Started reading this one. This is Here and Gone by uh, Halen Beck. I just got weirded out on this one. You know, you think, okay, it's fine, but it was weirded out in the area of that I didn't want to read about kidnapping and major abuse going on and that's what this one was leaning towards um, where an officer uh, ended up kidnapping a woman off the side of the road in front of her children and took her and it, it just when it got to that point and I kind of was had this hesitance of wanting to read it so yeah so I just when I started getting that gut reaction or that visceral I don't want to read because it feels like it's going to be kind of like a hostile hostile type of torture kind of is what it, I was just had this feeling it was going to be um, I just didn't want to read that um, so I stopped before it can get to that point I don't know if it goes to that, but it's just started to getting those type of feels. So that's why this one's going to go. And it may not go that far, but I didn't want to have the potential that it could. So this one's going to go. Yeah, that's just, it's too far. To me, it's different if it's like a horror-esque book that is creature feature and that type of thing. I can deal with some brutality, but I can't. Do this where it's going to be a torture, rape, graphic type of thing. And that's, like I said, I don't know if that's where this one was going, but I didn't want to take the chance because I, I don't think I would have handled that very well. All right, so the next one, moving on for that one. This one um, actually is kind of ironic by the time that I got this book. Uh, Coronas actually came <laughs> came out, but this is Master uh, Maze Master by Kathleen O'Neill Gear. Again, I had high hopes for this one. Again, it kind of intrigued me. It was like an old version of a virus that has come back. Um, maybe possibly even been engineered to come back. Um, but again, it just went off into left field, talking about all these uh, people. This uh, this woman that is. I think it was a woman, if I remember. It's been a while since I've tried to read this. Um, it was last year, um, midway through the last year, I think, when I got this book. And she was, I think it was a she, she was being locked down in a bunker because she knew about the coding of some sort. It might have been a male. I can't remember. But, yeah, so it was very government hush-hush. Let's take people off. It's supposed to be a thriller-esque. And I just couldn't get into it enough because it jumped around. I'm not one, if a book jumps around in a very chaotic manner, I lose my uh, place in the book and I have a difficulty following all these different threads if it's not done well. And I just couldn't follow this one. For me, it wasn't done well enough that the flow wasn't interrupted. And when flows are interrupted, it pulls me out of a book and then I have a hard time getting back in once I figure out this every other chapter is going to be like that or every other um, break in a chapter is going to be like that. I just lose interest, unfortunately. Alright, again, I thought this, this would be right up my alley. Um, again, this, I think a half price book or it was in Goodwill, I can't remember. But this is Night Road. Um, this is a vampire book. I thought it would, again, be right up my alley, but it just the writing style just didn't pull me in it was again very weirdly written whereas uh, 
one of your main characters, I think is a main character, was from outside of town. He was brought back in um, from the vampire kind of overlord for that area and having to take on other like newbie vampires because they're just not getting their things together. It's just like I said, wasn't wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So it was kind of a disappointment and I ended up DNFing it. I have yet to figure out my place with Stephen King. Um, this is the cell. It is very brutal um, with Stephen King. I really enjoyed it. the most part. The premises behind it was pretty cool. It's a survivalist post-apocalyptic after uh, the event takes place. Um, so they're having to band together to survive. I liked everything up until the very end. I did not like the ending and I think I've done a, either a written review on this one or I might have done a maybe some up review and a, a wrap up or something where I talked about it. I hated the ending. <laughs> I absolutely hated the ending and I wish it had been done differently um, but I think he's known for that. Um, I know I've read like Silver Bullet and I like his early stuff Misery and Pet Cemetery. I enjoyed those. This I think is newer or newer-esque and I just yeah, I, I just, mm, I, I wish it had ended better. I, I did not like the ending. Alrighty, I think it's, I can't remember which of these. I think it's this one. I have two by, and I love Kay Hooper. I love her other books that are kind of the original before it spin, uh, did the spinoff with the Bishop series. I love the original works. They were done well. I think it's this one that it's Hold Back the Dark where you, it took all of these kind of like previous characters from her earlier books, oh, quite a few of them, plus a few new characters um, that were at least newer to me, and put them all into the story. But it did not feel like her writing because um, it didn't flow right. It didn't have her mystique in her writing. Um, it, it just it wasn't good and it had a very very anticlimactic ending where it built these people up to that they had to be there it was just a specific group and it came down to one character who really did all of everything it was bizarre uh, very unusual for her writing that I don't like it um, that tip is un, like, unusual that I don't like something from her because I loved the previous Bishop books before it went into this series. Um, normally, again, but it's typically if there are single characters that the story revolves around and not having this huge cast, that tends to be, my, again, my, more of my preference. Um, Fear of the Dark was a little bit better. Um, again, I either did a written review on it or I talked about it in a previous um, wrap up. Um, I liked it. Um, again, not as much as the previous one, but it was better written than Hold Back the Dark. I think it's part of that either trilogy or spinoff. It was done a little bit better, but not enough that I want to keep it. Keep it around. Then <laughs> we're going to end with this particular book. This is Baby Teeth by Zohe St um, Stage. Again, I may be butchering these names. I do apologize for that. This one gave me kind of the reminiscent feelings of The Perfect Child, or Perfect Child, I think it's what it's called. The Perfect Child, I have a love-hate relationship with that book, and I did do an individual review on that book that I can link in the cards and down below. Um, I have, still have a lot of thoughts on that book. It's a psychological thriller um, written by a, psych a child psychologist, I believe, either child psychologist or forensic psychologist, one of the two. Um, I can't remember which. It was so well done. This one gave me those similar feels, but when I started reading it, it was from both the mother and the child's point of view, but it was so mixed up that it was difficult, again, to follow, and then when I can't follow and put things together, I lose interest. Um, so it didn't have as many of the creep factors. It was more where you can tell the child wants to just get rid of the mother. Um, it just it wasn't as well done as Perfect Child. So I did end up DNFing it when I figured out it was just not 
ha nothing was just drawn me into. I didn't have enough feel or want to read them. Um, the mother, she is basically a person that should probably never have had a child. She pretty much tells you that. That she feels like she's not an unfit mother because she just can't connect with her child and all of these things. And it just, I could not get enough into it because it, ju again, jumped the perspective so much that I, I just couldn't find the flow in it for me. But anyways, if you have read any of these authors and you have a book that you would think um, would make me really want to read more from them, um, please leave me comments down below about that. But anyways, this is the conclusion of part one of my unhaul. I have more books to come um, later. Again, some of them are from my bookshelf. Um, I wanted to kind of do a, a good mix. Books that I could really do a lot more talking on versus just saying, oh, this is not a book that I want to read. Um, just kind of give you some general thoughts um, on it. Hopefully I was a little bit clear, not just too rambly, where it was ineffective for you guys to learn anything about these books. And this one I have decided I will pick it up this week. Um, hopefully I'll get this video out um, this week so you'll know I'm going to pick this one up and start reading it. If I read it and I get into it, I'll let you guys know. Please follow me on uh, Instagram because that's where I do a lot of my um, book updates on. But I'm going to give it a shot this week and if I can't, then you'll know it's going to be in a halt. So that is, I think, for my maybe book. I'm going to give it a last chance and see if I enjoy it um, this week. And again, follow me on Instagram, um, Passion Girl Books 79 and that's where, again, I do my updates for that. But anyways, um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. And until my next video, I hope you have a good one. Bye, guys.